sort of God, I will get around to actually having a routine on this channel because it is ridiculous. What's the crack guys? Welcome back to my channel. It's Kazzy. I know, I know, I know. It has been a hot minute since I last uploaded. I had every intention in the world to do my next video after my November TBR in a mug video. Then I was going to do my travel videos. I had every will and intention in the world to get those videos up and out and then to move on and do my September and October wrap up and then November wrap up and then do a whole bunch of videos that I wanted to do. Then our fucking internet service provider deleted our account, not once, but twice. And it took a month and a half to get that resolved. A month and a half without internet. I went through my mobile data like nobody's business because that's the only internet that I had. Sucks. So the way that this is going to work in this video is that I'm going to do the wrap up for the last four months of 2018. I'm not going to go into great detail on a lot of the books because I don't think you want to be sitting here for like two hours just hearing me ramble about books. Maybe you are. I don't know. I had thought about just starting fresh and going straight in with 2019 wrap-ups and resolutions and things like that but then there are books from the last four months that I really want to talk about so I'm going to go through them month by month tell you what I read and then maybe like talk about the ones that I really wanted to talk about so without further ado let's just get into it because I've got a lot of books to talk about. So in September I read four books. Now I was on a cruise which you will have seen with my Navigator of the Seas video and my travel diary that was all in September so I didn't really have a lot of time to read because that cruise was two weeks long. If you're on a cruise and you're like me you don't have time to read because you're going here there everywhere you're doing this you're doing that and you are napping because uh, they're exhausting. So as I said in September I read four books and the first one of those is The Midnight Front by David Mack. This is the first book in his Dark Arts series. I give this five stars. The second book that I read was The Book of Three which is the first book in the Chronicles of Prydain series by Lloyd Alexander which I give three stars. I also listened to the audiobook of Winter which is the final book in the Lunar Chronicles series by Marissa Meyer and I also read Hollow City which is the second book in the Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children series by Ransom Riggs. This was a reread because a Map of Days, which is the continuation of the Miss Peregrine's se series, was coming out and I wanted to re-familiarise myself with one of my favourite book series of all time. Loved it. I didn't get to read The Library of Souls in time for Map of Days, but I just... Oh my gosh, I just love this one so much. This book is actually what Disney's The Black Cauldron is based off of. I didn't actually know The Black Cauldron was based off of a book, so once I found it was a book I was like... I'm gonna read that. This pretty much follows the Black Cauldron to a T. It was packed with excitement to about halfway and then it kind of petered out for the rest of it so that's why I did to give that one three stars. Like, I am so inconsistent with saying my star ratings. Five stars, three stars. Winter I absolutely loved. I think it was like a little bit too much drawn out for my liking. Press is still my favorite character from that series and Thorn is still my favorite guy. There are times when I just did not like Wolf at all. I thought he was so whipped in that book. I just felt like Winter was too drawn out for my liking but I give that one four stars. But the star of September was The Midnight Front. This is like an adult Harry Potter meets World War II. Literally there is a scene like you're a wizard Cade. I'm not lying, except maybe not with that accent. Cade finds out that he is a wizard when he is 21 when his parents are murdered by the bad guys. He finds out that he is a wizard and he starts training because he plays a pivotal role in ending World War II. Yes, there are wands, but to use their magic, they have to invoke demons and put their soul into servitude in return for using those abilities and they're only loaned. You can only use those powers for so long and then you have to invoke that demon again. An incredibly complicated magical system but a wonderful magical system and what I loved about this book is that David Mack does not shy away from the horrors of World War II. This book actually traumatized me in some of the scenes that David Mack wrote. I was like literally my heart was beating in my chest. Again, he is very much like George R. R. Martin. No character is safe, by the way. Just so you know, don't get attached. I got attached. He died. Also, David Mack takes you to pivotal moments and pivotal locations in World War II, like Normandy, Auschwitz, Paris. It was 
beautiful. It was wonderful. It was traumatizing. It was exciting. It was just everything. It was kind of like, as I said, it's like Harry Potter, but almost like Captain America First Avenger aspects of it. It's weird. It's wonderful. I cannot wait for the next book in the series, The Iron Codex, which is actually coming out in a couple of days. This is his first foray into his own piece of work. I previously had read his Star Trek novels. He wrote the Star Trek Destiny trilogy, which was epic. Like, epic. I could not believe the way that this series was. It was just incredible. It's one of my favorite books in the Star Trek canon. If you want to read like a very adult, dark, charmed meets supernatural book set during World War II, this is the beast for you. Moving on to October and the first book that I read was A Map of Days by Ransom Riggs. This is the fourth book in the Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children series. And then I read City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab, which I give four stars. Then I read The Wicked Deep by Shay Earnshaw, which I give two stars. I also read The Squicker Wonkers by Evangeline Lilly, which I give three stars. Then I read Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor, which I give four stars. I also read Matilda by Roald Dahl, which I give five stars. And the last book in October that I read, or rather listened to the audiobook for, was Layer of Dreams by Libba Bray, which is the second book in the Diviners trilogy, and I give this five stars. If you noticed from the September one, I didn't do that in order. These are just the way that I want to talk about them. So I'm going to start with the Squicker Wonkers by Evangeline Lilly. Yes, that Evangeline Lilly. Wasp Evangeline Lilly. Lost Evangeline Lilly. Evangeline Lilly. As soon as I found that, that she was an author, I had to get it. It is literally this thick and it is that creepy. And just look at her author photo. <gasps> I die. It is illustrated by Johnny Fraser Allen. It's told in limericks, which have some of the most intriguing um, rhymings to them. And they have all of these like so creepy illustrations and they have these all these characters. And this girl is such a spoiled little brat. She just doesn't like anything. And so she ends up being turned into a squicker wonker. I think there's another book in the series, which obviously I'm going to get because, you know, fun girl priorities. The Wicked Deep was such a disappointment. I don't know why. It, this is like pitched as a practical magic meets hocus pocus. It wasn't that. I didn't get anything from it. I didn't really like the writing style. I didn't gel with any of the characters, but it just did not grab me. I just didn't know what was going on when I was reading it. It was just meh nah, for me. I really wanted to like this book because so many people were talking about it. Matilda, I saw this edition in Waterstones. It is for the 30th anniversary of the release of Matilda, the book. It came out with these editions of what Matilda might have grown up to be. I think there are three editions. There's the Expeditionary Matilda. There is the Astrophysicist Matilda, which I also do own as well. And then there is this one, which is the Chase chief executive of the British Library and I think this is definitely what Matilda would probably be. I read Matilda when I was in P6 so that was around when I was like 10 years old and I don't really remember exactly what happened in it. Of course we all know the movie you know with Mara Wilson and Danny DeVito. This is like the movie but very much not like the movie and I love them both as two separate entities. I love the movie but I also love this book so so much. I love the characterization of Matilda. I love Miss Honey. I love the way that Roald Dahl created Miss Honey and that, you know, she is in this situation for this reason. Whereas in the movie, they don't really go into that. This goes into that and it is a beautiful edition. I love it. And just look at it underneath. It is pink and it's gorgeous. And she would sit and read most afternoons, often with a mug of hot chocolate beside her. But change that to hot coffee and yes, that is me. I actually do think that Matilda is going to be my Alice in Wonderland. You know, the way Haley and Bookland collects all these Alice in Wonderland editions. I think Matilda is going to do that for me. I actually do now own three. I have no idea where my first edition is. I think it's downstairs somewhere. I'm going to talk about Layer of Dreams next. I listened to the audiobook narrated by January Lavoie. Oh my god. God. Yes, these books are intimidating and so that's why I go the audiobook right mostly because I couldn't get the edition of The Diviners, the first book that I wanted, so I just went with the audiobook. Incredible. January Lavoy does an amazing job. Libba Bray does an amazing job with the writing. It is so atmospheric. I love all the characters. Theta is my queen. I adore her. Evie, she is just 
the snarkiest little creature. Oh my gosh, I love Evie. Sometimes I was like listening to it at work and I wasn't really supposed to be. And Evie would just come out with some retort to Sam and I was just like, I had to stop myself from bursting out laughing. It was so good. I love this series so much. I cannot wait to get to Before the Devil Breaks You. And I honestly do think that that book will break me. But it's just, I love this series so, so much. 1920s New York with supernatural things happening. Yes. Oh my gosh. Just do, your, do yourself a favor and just read The Diviners or listen to the audiobooks by January LeBoy you won't be sorry. The much anticipated sequel to Strange a Dreamer by Lainey Taylor, Muse of Nightmares. Just look at this cover. It is gorgeous. I, I love UK covers for the series so, so much. Now I'm going to say why I gave this four stars instead of five because Strange a Dreamer is one of my favorite books. Strange a Dreamer is a slow burn. This is a slow burn as well. I was wondering what was actually happening in this book. There were times when I was wondering what is going on. There were times I thought that I felt like I was lost. Whereas with Stranger Dreamer, I didn't feel that way at all. And the thing about this book that made it a four stars for me is the relationship between Laszlo and Saray. It was just too YA. I know it's a YA book, but it was just too YA. They were too obsessed with trying to figure out how to have sex. Yes, I know like they're, like they're teenagers, but I don't really need to read that. It is not a priority for me to read that. That's why I was like, okay, oh my God, here they go again. I, d I didn't really like that. I didn't appreciate that. But what I did appreciate was Minya, that evil little minx. Love her. She is my favorite character in this series, Minya. Yes. Once everything got going and Lainey Taylor picked up the piece, I was like, yes, I am living for it. I am here for it. I am strapped in for this. Let's go on this ride. Loved most of the book, but it was just those things. And the fact that it was like slow burn, eh, just, just knocked it down the peg. Just knocked it down the peg. City of Ghosts, very cute. Set in Scotland. Can't be mad at that. There's not really much I can say about this. It was, it was fun. It was cute. It had the ghosts and it had like supernatural parts of it, to it and it'll be interesting to see where Victoria Schwab takes this series next because Cass's parents go all around doing this like ghost hunting kind of thing it's like most haunted but in book form if you don't know what most haunted is it is a television show here in the UK where they go into these like haunted places and see if they can get like activity astral orbs light orbs movement things like that I used to be obsessed with that show. I stopped watching it for the stupidest reason. That was because they kept nudging the microphone and their cameras and that noise just cuts right through me. Four star. And I'm up of days, the most anticipated read of my entire life because I love this Paragon Tunnel for Peculiar Children oh so much. So this is the continuation of it. The only niggling thing about this book is that there was not enough Miss P. Give me all of Miss Peregrine. Ransom Riggs, seriously, if you want to do like an origin story book for Miss Peregrine and her youth and her training and everything else that goes into being an inbreen, I would be so down for that. Please do it. Please. But all of our favorite characters are back in the series. It picks up right where Library of Souls leaves off. They're in America. The Peculiars are in America in the modern day, so they have no idea what the internet is. They have no idea what the, the television is or a television remote does or this or that. So they have to live in the modern world and adapt to the modern world, which leads to some very interesting experiences. I love this book so much. I love the way that Ransom Riggs delves deeper into the characters and their relationships with each other. I love the way that in America, they have no membranes. They have less rules and regulations compared to the UK um, peculiars. And I just love the way that Miss Peregrine is uber protective. I love the character development. I love the places. I love all of the new locations, the new parts, the new peculiars. And I cannot wait to see where this goes next. Ransom Riggs plays right in more Miss Peregrine. In November, I did my November TBR out of a mug. Don't know why I said it like that, but we're going to go with it. I picked out seven books. So from that I chose Lincoln and the Bardo by George Saunders, The Savage Song by V.E. Schwab, 
Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson, Uncommon Type by Tom Hanks, Hind of the Baskervilles by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafón, and as a bonus, I picked The Deathly Hallows by J.K. Rowling because <laughs> I hadn't read it yet. So from those seven books, I ended up reading nine books in November. Starting off, I read Lincoln and the Bardo by George Saunders, which I gave two stars. Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson, which I give three stars. Uncommon Type by Tom Hanks, which I give three stars. The Hind of the Baskervilles by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, which I give three stars. The Crimes of Grindelwald by J.K. Rowling, the original screenplay, which I give four stars. This Savage Song by V.E. Schwab, which I give four stars. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows by J.K. Rowling, which I give five stars. Boy by Roald Dahl, which I give four stars. And The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafón, which I give five stars. I'm going to start talking about this one because what the fuck? Excuse the French, but seriously, I had no idea what was going on in this book. I love the entire premise of this book, which is obviously why I bought it. But the way that Saunders wrote it, I had no idea what was even going on because it's written like this. You see paragraph, 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 paragraph. And there's like names underneath everything. And then you have like things like this where there's like a citation here. I have no idea what was even happening in this book. I couldn't follow it. I thought I was able to follow it, but I wasn't. I had no clue what was going on. I don't understand how this won the Man Booker Prize for 2017 because it's. it felt like it wasn't even a book. I didn't even feel like I was reading a story. I felt like I was reading a collection of excerpts from people's diaries, from people's papers, from people's recollections. And I just didn't know what I was reading. I couldn't figure out what was happening. As I said, it was just ridiculously confusing. And so I was just like, I have no idea what is going on. Treasure Island. All I could think about was Muppet Treasure Island when I was reading this. Especially when Long John Silver would be by the powers. All I could just see was Tim Curry in his garb when I was reading this. Boy by Roald Dahl. This is kind of like his autobiography with some like fictionalizations in it. But I just love the, the drawings inside of this. And the thing is, <laughs> I actually bought this off of Amazon from a school and they actually doodled all in here. And I was like, no, I'm taking that away. This was literally the edition that we had when I read this for the first time in first year of high school. I love finding out more about Roald Dahl and where he got his inspiration for the likes of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. It, it's just wonderful. And if you love Roald Dahl and you love his, his books, you definitely should check this out. Uncommon Type by Tom Hanks. This is a collection of short stories. With most short story anthologies, some are hit, some are missed. Some of them I really, really enjoyed. I can't remember which exactly were the ones I enjoyed. He has a wonderful writing style, Tom Hanks, and he really knows how to bring characters to life, obviously being an actor, and he knows how to have so many different characters in this book. There's so many short stories in here, like you know, it's a thick book. So there's quite a lot of short stories in here. Some of them are longer than others. Some of them are better than others. Some of them I loved more than others, but nevertheless it is a very decent piece of work. I am thrilled to have read it. Um, I adore Tom Hanks. I just love that I have a book by Tom Hanks. That's literally what, why I bought it in the first place because, you know, as I said, fangirl priorities. I finally read The Savage Song by V.E. Schwab. This was so intriguing. I had no idea really what this was about. I kind of had an inkling but I did not know what was going to happen in this. It was so good. I love Kate. I love August. I love August's little sister. I can't remember her name but so good and weirdly this reminded me of a combination of something. It's like Judge Dredd meets Legion, you know, that the one with Paul Bettany. It kind of reminded me of that. Hound of the Baskervilles. Um, I literally just read the story of the Hound of the Baskervilles. There's a couple of other stories in this edition because I they're not in order that you're supposed to read them because I looked up what order you're supposed to read them. But I really enjoyed this. I loved Sherlock. But the thing was, Watson takes more of an active role in the Hound of the Baskervilles because... 
Sherlock appears more at the start of the story and then he sends Watson on ahead to do the research and then he comes along later. Very interesting. Love the way that Watson takes center stage in this one, but also the way Sherlock just does everything in his elementary, my dear Watson, and then just tells everybody that that's what it was. I actually figured out who had done it pretty early on, so I was like, go me. Uh, but yeah, uh, very much enjoyable. Of uh, the classics, I was actually able to read this without having to look up Spark Notes or Wikipedia, so double go me. Crimes of Grindelwald screenplay. Literally just the movie typed out. I know there are a lot of controversial thoughts about The Crimes of Grindelwald. I have my own as well. I'm not going to go into them, but I just love this edition. It is gorgeous. Um, I will say that the movie was enjoyable for me, but I didn't love it. I thought it was a complete character assassination of Queenie, but Tina and Newt. I love you, babies. I finally can say that I have read Harry Potter. I will say, out of all of those books, I think my favourite is The Deathly Hallows. Either that or Goblet of Fire. Loved it. And I also think that I had read this book at the most perfect time in my life because, because I had watched The Crowns of Grindelwald before finishing this. And the thing was, after watching Fantastic Beasts and The Crowns of Grindelwald, I was able to actually understand all of the connect between Dumbledore and Grindelwald because he plays such a prominent part in this and how he has the Elder Wand and why the Elder Wand appears in The Crimes of Grindelwald. So I think I read it at the most perfect time because otherwise if I had just read that like say earlier this year after I had read The Half-Blood Prince I wouldn't have made all of those connections and then the whole thing where J.K. Rowling says oh Dumbledore is gay. Like, I understood it now. I, I saw what she was trying to get at, why she said that. Now I'm excited for what the rest of the Fantastic Beasts movies give up, gives us. Hopefully J.K. Rowling will get her shit together and, you know, piece it together in a way that's not, like, just, like, shitting over canon. And The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. Oh my goodness. I actually listened to the audiobook of this, um, physically read part of it. This is a beautiful, beautiful story. The thing about Lu um, Ruiz Zafon is that he is a beautiful storyteller. He is an amazing storyteller. That's what I find when I read Marina earlier in the year. Because all of his characters are pretty much investigating. And so they go to the, all of these people and uncover more of the story. And they all tell the story. It is just fascinating. Like, usually I am more of a do instead of say in terms of plot, but the way that he has everything being told, I am captivated. I'm sitting there like, like, I, like, I feel like I am sat in front of like a grandparent, like telling me the story. It is beautiful. It is incredible. And the beautiful thing that I love about the audiobook is he pronounced everything right. Ruiz. Ruiz. Not Ruiz, Carlos Ruiz Zafon. Carlos Ruiz Zafon. Yes! I'm probably even butchering it. Lucia Greaves does the most amazing work with the translation. Amazing work. And we're finally at December where I read four books. The first of those was Labyrinth Lost by Zoraida Cordova, which I give three stars. An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green, which I give three stars. The Christmas Hirelings by M. E. Braddon, which I give three stars. My Girls, A Lifetime with Carrie and Debbie by Todd Fisher, which I give four stars. And The Princess Diarist by Carrie Fisher, which I give five stars. If you don't already know, my tradition is that each year this would be the last book that I read. This was the last book that I read in 2016 when she passed away. I was actually reading it when my mom came in and told me that Carrie Fisher had passed away. And last year it was the last book that I read in 2017. And so it was going to be the last book that I read in 2018. I listened to the audiobook for this. I love the audiobook for this because I just love the way Carrie Fisher narrated all of her audiobooks so wonderful and I love the way that Billy Lord does all of the diary entries. At first I was like I hate the way that she's reading this but as they went along I fell in love with it. I was actually disappointed by this book. It wasn't anything remarkable to me. <laughs> Pun intended. I had him in the hat about reading 
this book about actually picking it up by actually buying it my friend gave it five stars and then i saw hannah at clockwork reader talk about it and she said it was amazing she loved it it was one of her favorite books of the year and so i was like right okay sold so the next time i was in waterstones i picked it up and started to read it and it wasn't anything you know spectacular it was enjoyable april is in no way a likable protagonist i find her completely annoying she's not even really a worthy protagonist i was so annoyed by her i was fed up with her half the time she's wholly unlikable and i know that she's intentionally supposed to be wholly unlikable but i didn't think that a lot of this was wholly realistic like i know it's like a science fiction book and you know it's not supposed to be realistic but even realistically half of this stuff would never happen even for a vlogger even some of the things that happened i was like okay it was like somebody else took over writing it or else hank green just rolled the dice to see right a six she get she does this a five she does this a one she does this as i said it was enjoyable which is why i gave it three stars i liked it but i didn't love it labyrinth lost i have been wanting to read this ever since i heard about it because it is witches in brook Brooklyn. It is part of the Brooklyn Brujas series. Brooklyn Witches. Brujas is Spanish for witch. I was really rooting for it from the first chapter and then it just nosedived. I just don't know what happened. The writing style just became so choppy for me and I wanted to love this book because this is one of I think Lee Bardugo's favorite book series and I was just like eh nah. I couldn't imagine it. I couldn't picture any of this in my head. Maybe if I reread it when I'm really in the mood to read it then I might like it a bit more or when I'm not like stressing thinking oh my god I still have to read eight books and I only have four weeks to do it and it's Christmas and you know I work retail but does like time suck because I'm going to work in the dark and coming home in the dark I have no time for this but the best one of the month was definitely my girls a lifetime with carrie and debbie by todd fisher who is carrie fisher's brother and debbie reynolds son obviously what i loved about this is that todd is just like carrie she's like unapologetically honest and i love that i love that about this book and i listened to the audiobook as well as physically reading it because he narrates it himself and he has the same reading style and writing style as his sister. You get to see Carrie Fisher from a different perspective. Most of us know who Carrie Fisher was and the way that she talks and the way that she talks about her family and her childhood and this, that and the other. Whereas Todd gives a different perspective on that. He doesn't give the drug amnesia recollection he was there he remembers this he was there he was living it he was breathing it obviously i love this and then when it got to their passings oh my gosh oh my gosh the todd nearly broke my heart and that was the part that i listened to and oh my goodness just the way everything happened and how that impacted billy and what billy had to go through and then the aftermath and then what happened with debbie and how her passing happened and what went on that day it was just heartbreaking and i really thought that he did it justice he really wrote a beautiful book that i think any fan of carrie fisher and debbie reynolds should read what i loved about it is that it wasn't all about the girls like todd's life as well was fairly dramatic oh my goodness that poor man i thank him for writing this highly recommend it if you're a fan of either go and read it right now you will not be sorry just have a box of tissues with you so there you have it guys those are all of the books that i read in the last months of 2018 i hope this video was not ridiculously long i had planned to put it into two parts september october and then november and december and then i decided right i'll just like quickly talk about them so hopefully this isn't ridiculously long if you've got this far thank you so much for watching i am hoping to get back on track i have switched departments at work again so i should have more free time to film because i'm finishing in daylight the next videos that are going to be coming are going to be the yearly wrap-ups like my favorites the disappointments the books that i want to read in 2019 and my resolutions for 2019 if you want to keep an eye for them subscribe to the channel and click the little bell icon so that you'll be notified when i upload a new video thank you guys so so much for watching thank you 
for staying with me. Hello to all my new subscribers. I promise I'm going to try and get a hide of all of this. Yes, I did say a hide of it because <laughs> I'm Northern Irish because that, that, that's how we speak. Thank you guys again for so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!